Well, hello again, and welcome to AB Plus this week. There's just Trevor and myself, so there's no plus, there's just AB. Um, and tonight we're really thinking about the Ten Commandments and what we've really looked at over the past couple of months since before Christmas, really. Um, and we're going to go through a few things with you, a few books that we have, a few on the Ten Commandments, and then a few maybe that will help us apply them to our lives, really. But before we begin, um, Trevor, I believe you have a wee reading there from the Old Testament and I have one from the New Testament. So maybe if you want to start with that reading and then I'll, I'll come in after you. Yep. Good evening, folks. And we just want to read uh, from Joshua chapter 1. Uh, verse 7 to 9. Uh, each vodcast, Mark has been bringing us readings uh, to guide us. So tonight we want uh, to bring you two readings as we open up. So first, uh, Joshua chapter 1 uh, from verse 7. It says, Only be strong and very courageous that you may observe to do according to all the law which Moses, my servant, commanded you. Do not turn from it to the right hand or to the left, that you may prosper wherever you go. This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate in it day and night, that you may observe to do according to all that is written in it. For then you will make your way prosperous, and then you will have good success. Have I not commanded you, be strong and of good courage. Do not be afraid nor be dismayed, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Thank you, Trevor. And then um, one from the New Testament. So it's good to have one from the Old and one from the New uh, complementing each other. And this is found in Matthew chapter 5, verses 17 to verse 19. Do not think that I have come to abolish the law or the prophets. I have not come to abolish them, but to fulfill them. For truly I say to you, until heaven and earth pass away, not an iota, not a dot, will pass from the law until all is accomplished. Therefore, whoever relaxes one of the least of these commandments and teaches others to do the same will be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever does them and teaches them will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. So there we have uh, two readings that really uh, help us as we start, hopefully. Now tonight, really, is all about books. <laughs> I hope you're all readers and I hope you'll maybe be readers after tonight. Um, hopefully we'll, we'll encourage you to um, to have a, a closer look at some of the stuff that we have been looking at uh, in Exodus um, from the Ten Commandments. But really I just wanted to start with a couple of books that I read and that I know some of our guests read as well in preparation for each night. Now, there are lots of books on each of the commandments individually, um, but I'm just going for some that are really overviews of the Ten Commandments with all of them in it. And I'm going to start with my personal favourite, the one that I really, really enjoy reading. And that is, well, I know this is probably going to be back to front here, but it's called A Pathway to Freedom by Alistair Begg. And this is just an absolutely fantastic book. It's so easy to read, so easy to understand. And there's so many great examples from Alistair Begg's own life. Um, and because he's, he's Scottish, he's Scottish roots, some of the examples are a lot easier to understand than maybe other books that we have that would be maybe more uh, American. And some of the things we're reading them are quite hard to understand, maybe. Um, but anyway, the second book that I, I would recommend, uh, and I know a lot of our guests use this, this is the one that came up the most was Kevin DeYoung on the Ten Commandments. Now, this is a good book. I wouldn't say it's a it's a great book. It's not up among the greats, but it's a good book nonetheless. Um, there's probably not that much in this book that isn't in Alistair Begg's book. So it's it's good, but it doesn't really add that much if you have, have the other one. Um, but there is a fantastic study guide in the back for each of the commandments. It takes each of the chapters, uh, a commandment, a chapter, and then at the back, there is a little study guide to help us with that. Um, a few questions on them, which is very helpful and really helps us apply um, apply the Ten Commandments to our own lives, our own life. And I suppose it's really helpful just to grasp the full meaning of 
uh, each commandment. Then I know, Trevor, you're going to probably talk about this one. Um, it was really the basis for our whole commandment series. Let me Ten guess. Commandments. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know what it was anyway. Um, the Ten Commandments by Thomas Watson. Now, the sheer amount of wisdom crammed into these pages is just unbelievable. You won't find any book, probably, any more comprehensive than this one on the Ten Commandments. It's absolutely fantastic. It works through each commandment very carefully, very strategically, systematically, um, and really answers so many questions as it does that. It's an older book, though. It is quite hard maybe to understand for some people that aren't used to that. I think, what was he, 17th century? So the language is a little bit older um, and the style is a little bit older, but it's an absolutely fantastic book. Maybe the other ones are a wee bit more up to date with their analogies and examples of how to break the commandments as such. Um, the other but, thing, Mark, that's good as well is if you know some of the younger generation are not book buyers, like uh, Thomas Watson's available as a, um, on on the web or as a PDF, mm -hmm. so you don't actually have to yeah. buy it. It's there if you want to read it online or scroll scroll through it. But as you say, just uh, a gold mine of yeah. information and teaching. Yep. Absolutely fantastic. Um, and then the last one that I'll talk about, I must admit I haven't read that much of this one, um, but I still would recommend it, probably more because of anything, because Banner of Truth have a, have a high praise of it um, on the front of it. And anything by Banner of Truth or anything that Banner of Truth talks about as being good, you can be sure that it's great. Um, but it's The Ten Commandments for Today by Brian Edwards. Um, it's a good book, but to be honest, I only really looked at it when I was stuck on certain issues. Although it does seem to work through each commandment quite systematically as well. And even the helpful addition of some of the subheadings and headings in it, you can see how it works through them very, very simplistically and sort of a bit at a time. So it's very, I think it would be quite useful, but I can't honestly say go and buy this book because I've read it and it's fantastic but what I have read of it it seems to be very good and it seems to be quite consistent as well but Trevor maybe you have a couple of extra there or, or something else that you think might be helpful yeah, for your um, listeners. I, I, I suppose uh, just just as, as an overview um, alongside Th Thomas Watson Ten Commandments the, the Shorter Catechism uh, I found w w was a good reference point just to try and condense some of the overarching themes and ideas in each commandment. So I, I would encourage uh, the catech shorter catechism alongside uh, the Ten Commandments. I, I suppose then where I went, uh, as you say, Mark, th those were overarching through the Ten Commandments. The, the one book that I have... And again, like you, I discovered on my bookshelf halfway through. So I haven't have read all, but I've read some. Uh, it's a book by John Parmeter. Uh, it's 10 at work. Uh, and this is about living the commandments uh, in your job. So it's overarching the 10 commandments. But what I've been inclined to look at is how we live out the commandments, how we make this relevant to our lives. So it's one thing to teach the Bible. It's another thing to apply it uh, and make it relevant to our lives. So this is a book that takes each commandment and gets us to think uh, about how we uh, are doing with the commandments, where we live and where we work or where we uh, have our social life. Uh, so that uh, is good. Um, uh, and useful and, and again folks m most w once we take jc ryle and holiness out most of these books are well within anybody's grasp a uh, couple of hundred pages max uh but very practical and down to earth so the tenant work um again mark you mentioned a or i'll mention a holiness uh mm -hmm. By J.C. Ryle, as I say, that's probably the heaviest, densest, thickest book. But again, like Watson, a lot of teaching. And personally, um, 
as I taught, uh, folks will be aware by now that I taught uh, the Ten Commandments as a midweek Bible study series, and then they be plus vodcast has come on the back of that as an opportunity to discuss questions, etc. that people had. But I personally have been challenged uh, about sin uh, in my life, about holiness and the need for greater holiness. And I had been reading through um, Holiness by J.C. Ryle. I still have quite a bit of a way to go, but I find this to be very compatible with what we're studying in the Ten Commandments, mm -hmm. because certainly um, the Ten Commandments, I think, as most of our guests, Mark, have said to us, uh, have made us stop and think, uh, yeah. and then going into holiness uh, it challenges us again how we're living and how we could live better in the yeah. light of the Ten Commandments. And it really, it really does that from the first chapter. <laughs> Because the first chapter is on sin, and then you're saying about your sin and your holiness. That's what chapter chapter one and chapter three. So it is a heavy read, to be fair. I it's yeah. I haven't made it through the whole way either, to be honest. But it's something that, although it's a hard read, you still can't put it down. But at the same time, you need to have a pen and paper with you, because yeah. otherwise, you know, you're never going to retain all the information in it. But it's an absolutely fantastic. I think anything by J.C. Ryle. To be honest, um, he's he's quite a few books, um, and some in that series. Another one, Old Paths, that would be quite helpful. And then I think it's Practical Religion. Religion. I'm not sure if it's that one or a different one. That well, by the title, I would assume it is because it's quite practical. Um, could could so, you just say yeah. when if you talk about J.C. Ryle, um, mm -hmm. to, to, two years ago we we're in holidays and we we're in Liverpool, and so I went to. Um, the, the cathedral in Liverpool where J.C. Ryle yeah. was the bishop uh, and they've it's a massive building and they've all sorts of things but they have a bookshop so I went mm -hmm. into the bookshop and I, I looked along the line and I couldn't see anything so I went to, to the girl at the desk and I says do you have any books by uh, J.C. Ryle and she says I don't think so and she went to the computer and she says no we, have, we haven't stocked any of those books for so many years and I thought well you know, as the saying goes, the man would turn his grave, you know. Um, so I thought it was quite sad uh, uh -huh. where he ministered. And as you say, a lot of great teaching and writing. And mm -hmm. it's not even stocked in his own bookshop, you know. But Yeah. But again, fantastic. Absolutely fantastic writer. Um, and he's one of those as well. What was he, 18? Uh, yeah, yes, he was in the late 1800s. Yeah. Start of the 19th, yeah. He's the sort of person that as you read him, and as you read some of the things he says and he talks about his day and what's happening in the world, it yep. doesn't seem any different whatsoever than today. It, uh, you, could, you could almost say that it's somebody writing it this past five or ten years that have that has just observed what's happening in the world. Absolutely fantastic. It's, it's interesting to say that, Mark, because so often in midweek um, in particular, you know, we've been teaching and we've had some discussion. Mm -hmm. um, people say to me, oh, you know, it's not like the old days never everybody went to church or it's not like the old days when everybody learned the catechism. Uh, yeah. And that, that's that's one of the things that struck me, as you rightly say, whenever I started off here, I said, well, you know, in J.C. Ryle's day, things weren't brilliant either, you know. So, um, and they weren't great in Exodus or Genesis either. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely not. Um, but anyway, if you have any... Anything else? Yeah, well, 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 just, just uh, 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 finishing, finishing out the holiness aspect again. Uh, going mm. back to Kevin De Young, um, there, there's this booklet or book, the hole in your holiness, uh, and again, for folks that want to study uh, for themselves a wee bit more about the Ten Commandments, this here again, uh, straight, straightforward read. Uh, as Mark says, taking it, bearing in mind it's from Kevin De Young. Uh, but then at the back of it, uh, there, there are study questions uh, to go alongside each chapter. So uh, it's thought provoking. Uh, and again, mm -hmm. it's like the ABP, AB plus vodcast. It's just another opportunity to think afresh uh, and to mm -hmm. come around another way at the Ten Commandments. Mm -hmm. Maybe a bit more of a simple read than than holiness as well. Yeah, yeah a bit more. Of, uh, uh, yeah, a bit more toned down. The, the other thing, um, just then, 
whenever we move into more specifics, Mark, like uh, as I say, we've either talked about Ten Commandments or about holiness overarching the whole thing. There are some, as you well know, from uh, hosting the discussions, there were some nights when we had quite in-depth discussion about like ethical things. The one that stands out for me is you shall not murder. Yeah. Uh, and within that, you you had murder, you had war, uh, you had killing people, you had euthanasia, you had abortion, uh, and those are all big topics in their own right. And I found myself, uh, and I think th these are actually, in light of what's going on with the ethics and laws at the moment, bioethical uh, issues uh, by day one, and again, that covers euthanasia, covers abortion, um, covers covers murder. Uh, so it's um, an ethical uh, discussion. So it's heavy read, but really to get our heads around these, we're going to have to do some heavy reading. Uh, yeah. And then there's um, David, David Cook, um, and he wrote The Moral Maze. Now, it probably is a bit more specific uh, about uh, abortion and euthanasia and not as wide ranging as other, but nonetheless um, very helpful and to just get your mind thinking uh, mm -hmm. about the ethics uh, and about what's so relevant because currently there's a discussion in Stormont about abortion uh, mm -hmm. in the House of Commons. Uh, there's um, euthanasia, I forget the name of the bill, but it's under discussion uh, and uh, assisted assisted uh, killing maybe. Um, sure. So you've got you've got those and then there's another uh, I've just had it from pastoral uh, care, but there's another wee series of booklets uh, and this one was to do with um, sexual sin. Uh, so again, um, how we combat the drift and the cheating and uh, sexual sin again uh, uh, has been about but it's certainly quite prevalent as a discussion mm -hmm. between Christian circles at the moment so again I would just encourage people it's good to read it's good to uh, prepare and armor hearts against the temptations that are out there uh, so there are quite a few uh, booklets like this that uh, are short uh, but they just keep us focused uh, and help us with the Lord's guidance uh, and the use of scripture to, to mm -hmm. um, uh, at least stand up to the temptations that the devil brings to us. Mm -hmm. So th those were some of the the, the, the books and, and booklets I, I had, mm -hmm. uh, Mark. There was, uh, there was one I came across. Um, I haven't read this now, but maybe you... Uh -huh or uh, some others are familiar with it. But uh, again, it's Banner of Truth. It's whatever happened to the Ten Commandments. Uh, and, uh, at least the title um, has encouraged me. I haven't bought it, but I must go and have a look because uh, it would seem to indicate to me that the feeling is that as the Christian church, we have tended to forget about the Ten Commandments. Mm -hmm. um, so... I've been encouraged by you taking us on here and helping us to discuss uh, and to bring the commandments to the fore again. Mm -hmm. Well, what I would say, just I suppose to the people at home as well, is that although we are probably hitting you quite hard with books here, you know, they're so helpful. Um, and people that have come on to discuss these aren't just people that have been born with insight. They're people who have read these books and, and a lot of those books. And... Um, Really, as we study scripture, and especially something like this in the Ten Commandments, it really helps us to get our, our brains moving over and, and thinking about these things. Um, I, I love books. I absolutely love them. But anybody can read, you know. And if if you can read, you should read. You should spend a couple of pounds on a wee book now and again and work through it. Banner Truth, talking a lot about them, and maybe going a wee bit off the topic of the Ten Commandments here. But if you want to start reading um, sort of shorter books, good books, maybe they're heavy enough, but they're a great starting point is a little series 
um, in banners with pure and paperbacks. Um, absolutely fantastic things. If you want to get into reading at all, you're not going to get any better than those. Um, so maybe maybe look into that. Don't be afraid to to dive into something that's maybe a bit more difficult as well. If you are already a reader, it can be really helpful just to expand your thinking on certain things. But maybe off the books for a second, Trevor. Uh, I didn't go through this with you at the start, but you've studied these a lot and you've studied them for midweek and then you've looked at them again with this. We've went through them and then we've we'll find out more as we've went along. Each night we've been, I think, every night after we've actually recorded, we'll, we'll sit back for five minutes and we'll talk about it. And every single night, somebody will say, without uh, failure at all, that they thought they got the easy one or whatever, something like that. And then they find out there was so much more to the commandment. Yeah. But maybe I could ask you, what was your what was your favorite one or maybe most challenging to look at either when you were going through midweek, because obviously that was the first time maybe that you really went into these um, to study them. And then of course, when we were looking at here, what do you think was maybe your favourite and your most challenging commandment? <laughs> it's a tough question. <laughs> yeah, um, I, I would. I, 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 I have to be perfectly honest, Mark, and to say that I found them all challenging to mm -hmm. varying degrees uh, mm -hmm. and that's not a cop-out answer that's just how, mm -hmm. how it was because I like so many of like you and so many of our guests have been brought up in church been taught the Ten Commandments different ways and being honest I probably thought I got my head around them all right and then as I started to study them for midweek and start into conversations with folks I thought you know what uh, you know like so many people I probably just have deluded myself I need to become more serious about this I, I suppose I'm drawn a bit uh, to, to the tenth commandment about coveting um, to some degree did, did I enjoy it uh, I, fo I found that qu quite interesting just mm -hmm. how it relates to the whole you know it's a very all-encompassing commandment and it's not just limited to, to, to certain items it really mm -hmm. applies to the whole of life um, yeah. so, so I, I suppose there was maybe uh, how would you say a wee bit more in, enjoyment in looking at the broader picture but uh, mm. I, I just personally declare uh, straight up that I found them all um, I, I, I challenge uh, and if it certainly uh, if nothing else it has it has all spoken to my life in terms we have studied um, the Ten Commandments we've studied the Lord's Prayer and currently we're into a midweek Bible study which are all online now um, on the Apostles Creed and Martin Luther the reformer his belief was that if his people if uh, or if the people got familiar with those three documents uh, and Luther uh, in his catechism very much encouraged people to pray the Ten Commandments and to pray the Lord's Prayer uh, and to pray through the Apostles' Creed uh, and I think if we could in some way draw those documents uh, into our own lives and our own spiritual habits and uh, that would be a good thing f for mm. us as individuals it would be good for us uh, as churches and as christians growing uh, together uh, because we could then rightfully uh, encourage each other mm. and what what about you mark well, what, well <laughs> which which one then since you're full of questions tonight no, which, always which, backfires, isn't it? <laughs> which which one which one did you find? Well, 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 to narrow it down to one, which one did you find the most challenging then, would you say? 
Um, well, I'll narrow it down to two, maybe. Um, <laughs> I found the eighth and the ninth stealing and lying to not be challenging as such, but I was surprised by how much they really covered, especially with the guests that we had when they were, they were talking about them. The thing about this is, you can study this all week. You can you can study a commandment all week yourself and you can come to so many conclusions. You can see so many things that you've never seen before. But then when you come on to this and you've three other voices, you've maybe been reading three other things. You know, yeah. it just, it blows you away at times just how much is actually in these commandments. But to be honest, as I looked at the Ten Commandments at the start and I thought about this series, I expected to be challenged very much so by the first four um, probably the first five actually I expected that those were going to be very very tough and those were going to be the ones that I were really going to have to study on but when I got to the sixth one and then as you work through to the tenth it's just they're the ones that you think you really have nailed down you know what they mean yeah mm -hmm. you know what they could all possibly um be, be thinking about, be looking at, but then when you have people on talking about, you know, murder and adultery, stealing, lying, and coveting, it's just unbelievable how much that actually encompasses. I find, I find, I find the all challenging. I find the first five challenging as expected, but I was not expecting to be challenged just as much as I was by how much is in the rest. In the, in the last five or six. Yeah. I thought that was, I just couldn't believe each week that we came on, somebody would have said something that, you know, you, you hadn't even read, you hadn't even thought about. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's just, it's absolutely amazing. And in terms of the Old Testament, the Ten Commandments are probably one of the best taught things in the, in the um, Old Testament. Now, that doesn't mean that everybody teaches them all the time, but we yeah. know them. Uh -huh. and it's just scary to think that if if those few verses that we know or we think we know in the Old Testament when we look at them we really don't how much is actually in scripture that we don't understand and that was that was the real challenge over the whole thing about actually understanding scripture and understanding the things you think you know you know how many quotes from scripture are you given all the time as encouragement or for certain situations but if you actually sit down and you study those, you know, there's so much more in them than you can ever imagine. And that that was the the challenging thing, but also the exciting thing. Yeah, uh, and, that, and uh, hopefully, Mark, uh, the people that are listening in will find the same. That's a, that is the exciting thing about Scripture. We're never going to grow tired on the side of eternity studying God's Word. We're, we're always going to be amazed at how the Holy Spirit leads us and understanding it and just for us to grasp that there's so so much more for all of us uh to to learn and um i just was discussing with someone the other day not not only have we to learn from god's word we're learning more about god and ultimately we're learning more about ourselves mm -hmm. Uh, yeah. So, so uh, hopefully we can convey some of that excitement uh, to, to the people that are listening and, and you, you know, and, and encourage others to dig into God's word because uh, we, we certainly haven't got to the bottom of the gold mine yet on it. No, definitely not. Um, and of course, yes, we would encourage anyone listening at all to pick one of those books, whatever it is, whichever one took your fancy tonight and buy it and, and have a reread of it because it will challenge you and it really it's an edifying thing reading a good book on something that you really are are into you're excited about um but i suppose we'll maybe wrap up or start to wrap up anyway um well i suppose we should say that we're not done and um, we are done the ten commandments um we're finished with those um but we're not done with this podcast yet because Trevor and I just love it so much. Um, we love getting people on and putting them in the hot seat and making them nervous to answer <laughs> questions. But we're not going to tell you what it is at the minute that we're looking at because we're not 100% sure. 
um, positive on the layout of it, but we have a few things in mind. So I suppose if any of you have any questions or, or things that you maybe want us to talk about in the meantime, don't be afraid to fire us a text um, or a message somewhere along the line. Maybe in the weeks in between, we can answer a few questions, even on the Ten Commandments, if you still have, have one of those. Um, but for now, we're probably going to take a week or so um, away from this to, to really prepare for the next set of um, studies, I suppose. And then we'll be back with you very shortly. So Trevor, do you have anything else to say? It's only been the two of us tonight. There's been no voices to break us up. Um, people are maybe sick of looking at us every week. But have you anything to add to that? Yeah, well, just uh, I want firstly, Mark, uh, to take the opportunity to thank you for organising it uh, week by week. Uh, I haven't analysed it all out, but on reflection, uh, we've had a good mix uh, of speakers, uh, both by gender and by ge geography and by age. Uh, so so I, I think it's been a very balanced production um, that you have brought us, and it's been spiritually stimulating and rewarding to, to take the time so my, my thanks to you uh, and just our appreciation uh, to those who have listened in to us uh, week by week or indeed have dropped in and discovered this uh, and trust that it will continue to be an encouragement uh, and a blessing and um, yeah look forward to working with you again on the next on the next show Mr. Allen. <laughs> Good job well um Thank you again, everybody, yeah. for coming along. And thank you, Trevor, as always, for, for keeping me right. Um, and hopefully we'll see you again in a few weeks. So bye for now, and thank you. Okay. Thank you. Bye-bye.